my name is Hao Tang. Uh, I'm a faculty at the BMCC Barava Manhattan Community College, and this is a joint work with my colleagues at uh, uh, CUNY City College and uh, Lighthouse Guild. Uh, me and Jawi will uh, present this um, our presentation recent research. And so, uh, first of all, I would like to give a quick overview of our research team and the project. And uh, our team has been working on uh, assistive technology for the blind uh, for about 10 years. And some of our research effort um, to address uh, navigation challenge of uh, visually impaired and blind people, as well as the autism disorder. And our purpose uh, support like from uh, National Science Foundation, um, mainly uh, focus on like uh, from PFI and ICC, mainly uh, build a smart and transportation hub, uh, like a train station bus terminal. Um, so uh, mainly focus on outdoor uh, navigation for the blind. And the recent effort, uh, recent NSF project, uh, extends the previous effort to outdoor navigation. So we all know building an accurate uh, 3D model, uh, road model is very important to the autonomous driving task. So our outdoor navigation uh, assistance um, also need a lot of data um, to um, the, from sidewalk. Although there are many data available and like open source or commercial data and technology available and uh, uh, such as the GPS, Google Map, and as well as the uh, uh, open NYC data. And, but there's still a lot of gap out there. So detail the storefront information and sidewalk infrastructure, obstacles and surface uh, uh, condition defects uh, are either missing or incomplete. So uh, however, collecting a large amount of data need a, a tremendous effort. So uh, it's really impo impossible to complete by a single team. So therefore we uh, develop a cross-sourcing and plus AI uh, empower the platform for data collection. And then uh, Java will um, introduce and, and demonstrate the platform uh, we call Doorfront. And at the end of our talk, and our end of our talk and we will announce uh, a competition uh, uh, so with uh, some detail, so we will e explain later with some uh, gift card or reward. Uh, with that, I will hand over uh, to Jiawei. So I hope you enjoy the talk. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hao. And, um, I will continue this presentation and um, welcome to this presentation, A1. And my name is Jiawei. Uh, let's get started. So um, the agenda for this for today's presentation will be includes like the first part we will talk about like why it is important to collect storefront accessibility data, and then we talk about like what a storefront is. We will introduce our contributions and the app features, and the following part is the we will talk about the preliminary results because we do some beta tests since this is a research project and we want to know the feedback from the other people or volunteers. And later on, we talk about the conclusion and the future work. And after that, we will, I will do a quick demo. And if we have time, I think we will do some Q&A part. So the first question is, why is why do we want to collect the storefront as a bit of data? So just for fun, um, I think the answer is definitely no. So the fact is that there are more and more black people living in New York City. And I think they deserve better life. So let me show you some statistic data so you can see how many people there. So 43 million black and 295 million living in the multi-rate to severe visual impairment were around according to the report issued by the WHO World Health Organization in 2020. And you can see this image, right? It's kind of blur and a little bit dizzy. So can you imagine that? Like some of the no vision or people with impairment, they have to suffer this kind of thing day by day. So it's very terrible. 
also there are over 200,000 people living in the with vision loss in New York City. In addition, thousands of black tourists are traveling in the New York City every year. So more and more, pe more, and more black people living in the New York City. Even the government won't help them. So according to the New York City Times, we know that a federal judge ordered New York City to install more than 9,000 accessible pedestrian signals at the city coastwalk. But that's talking about the city infrastructures. I think there are more than that. We have more challenge around the black people or even the people with mobility problems. So we all know that, that threat. So with the rapid development of the technology and the popularity of AI, more and more people know that, oh, if we can apply those technology or apply AI machine learning to develop some application, deep learning model, neural network to help them, what that, what that be? If that cool? Yeah, it is true. But what is the most important thing there? I think the answer is obvious, right? It's data. Data is the foundation of the digital world. Most of software applications are data driven. Deep learning models require a huge of data to train them. So leave of data, we can do nothing for now. But in, in that case, we know oh, data is so important. So that's the reason why we want to collect the storefront data. But now comes up with another question. Why we choose to collect storefront accessibility data instead of other data? Because we have lots of data in the real world we can collect. So in our research, the problem statement is various, and we found that the ancient localization still is one of the biggest challenges for the black people traveling in the urban environment. Just like the picture so on the right side. Can you imagine that if a black people, they want to visit a restaurant and the restaurant they have never been before, how can they get inside the restaurant and have a um, wonderful dinner? They have to use their hand or cam to keep in touch the walls or any other obstacle to, to get close to the door and then get inside. That's a waste of lots of time. And also they will feel pressure, stressful when they came to a new restaurant, a new place. Also, we have we still have last meters challenge. We, we cannot easily locate any store entrance, ramp, stair, door tap, and door loop. So more and more people, more and more developers like develops some, so many fancy application like the right here. But if we don't have enough information to support this application, for example, storefront data, how this application can help the black people. So in terms of the data we are collecting is the correct way to help them. But another question comes up, am I right? So we might be wrong. So in that case, we, we were thinking about do something for a tea study. We interview with six black people. We want to know what exactly they want, what information we want to collect, and which is helpful for them. And during the, the conversation, we know that most relevant data and close to our project is that they think most participants feel that having store entrance information in advance would great reduce their stress in getting around. So for example, one of our interviewers, they, they mentioned that uh, he mentioned that uh, it would be better to instruct the guide dog if, if we know those information in advance. And also they don't feel stressful to get around the, the urban environment or, or even go to hang out with the new friend in, into a new location, a place, a restaurant. Also, they mentioned that they all agree that knowing the types of doors and doors would be very helpful. For example, revolving door is, a, I think, the, the biggest challenge for them. Also, the auto automation door, because they don't know if this is just a glass or it's a door. So it's kind of a huge problem for them. 
But for us, I think we think, oh, that's very really convenient. But for them, that would be a, a nightmare. After all this study we, we make, and we finally come up with a, a thing is, we want to know, we know we want to collect the storefront data, but what the data looks like. And what we need for this um, storefront accessibility data. So first thing we know that we need something up to date storefront images. So because if the storefront already closed, is outdated and is useless, we don't want that because it's not helpful. And also, since this is a big data, it must be large scale and straight level since we want to cover all the New York City. And the third one, our data should be uh, georeferenced and it will be used onto other uh, navigation app or other other fancy application that maybe developer have interest. So how can we collect this kind of data with these attributes or properties? So in regular, you may think about, oh, maybe you can do something in-person audit and we look at the community, look at the storefronts by ourselves and we manually taking the pictures one by one and do some, do some label labeling job, or maybe we just save it in, in Excel. But that's turned out, oh my God, that's always a lot of time. So how can we do that? So that's where Dolphin comes in. So Dolphin is a web-based crop sourcing application that combines Google Straight View and artificial intelligence and provides an interactive interface and user-friendly labeling too. In, in Dolphin, we also design and implement Gamify interface to improve the volunteer engagement. So on the right side, this is the exploration page. So in this web application, there are two main parts. The first part is operation page. The second part is the labeling page. So we allow people in the exploration page to use the Google Street View to virtually walk through the whole New York City and query the image and label in image for us. Then when we curve the image, we will use the, the labeling page, the, la the user friendly labeling tool to label our storefront image. And let's talk about the contributions we have in, in this work. So the first one, we utilize the Google Street View as the image gallery. And the second part is we integrate machine learning storefront decision model into our app. And this model, is divided by Shen Huang and the rest of other authors. His name is called multi crew storefront decision model. And the third one is we combine crop sourcing idea with uh, volunteer management. The last one is we design and implement an algorithm to calculate the geographic coordinate for each storefront label. Let's talk about the, the Google Street View first. With Google Street View, obviously, we don't have to do some in-person audit, we, or we don't need to do any, uh, we don't need to take the photo manually because Google service will provide the image for us. Moreover, Google periodically update their Street View images, and we don't have to worry about that. They are updated or they are not up to date. We just use that, use their service. And also the fancy thing is the volunteer can virtually walk through the New York City. They, you know what, in, in the pandemic time, so it's not that safe to go outside. But so it's kind of hard to do some volunteer job, but within Dollfront, you, you can just click your mouse and then you can help up to make an effort to, to make a contribution for this community. The second part I want to talk about is the, the model. We integrate the multi crew storefront decision model that I mentioned before. The volunteers can query storefront images while virtually working, just like the, the GIF on the right side. They can query the image. And meanwhile, when, when the image was queried, the storefront decision model, we pre label all images. And volunteers just need to verify that the labels are correct. So, all the image has, has been pre-labeled. 
the volunteer don't need to label everything from scratch. All they need is just confirm is that correct or, or not. Maybe something is wrong because the, the model is not 100% correct, label everything right, right? That makes sense. So, but, but the volunteer just correct them or re even resize or even delete some incorrect funding box. That's it. That's what the volunteer needs to do. And I want to introduce the, introduce the workflow for you guys. So first thing, when the users click the button, and we and in the back end, we will automatically call the Google API service to query the image. And our model, our, our deep learning model, will look at this image and pre-label the image for us. And then this, this image will be sent to the users to do the final verification. So that's save users lots of time on labeling. The third part is combined crop sourcing with um, volunteer management. Maybe some people doesn't know about crop sourcing. Crop sourcing is a term that is a sourcing model in which individuals or organizations obtain rules and, and service um, according to the Wikipedia definition. So in our case, Dollfront is a non-profit platform where volunteers can contribute their effort to help us to collect useful New York City storefront accessibility data. So we want to combine the crop sourcing idea with the volunteer man, volunteers to do our job to collect large scale um, storefront accessibility data. The final part is talking about our algorithm. Since we want to make sure that each label is georeferenced, is georeferenced. So we develop a algorithm to calculate the labels geographic coordinates by projecting the 2D label to 3D building facade. And our doorfront accessibility data can be easily passed to shapefile or even JSON file for rendering on the map. You can use RGIS or QGIS, such of software to, to open our to open our data if you want to do some data analysis on that that will be yeah you it's free to free to use that so in our app there are lots of features and we mainly talk about these five features the first one is sky2 so we set up a sample scene with sample data to instruct people how to use storefront this dynamic guide to is step by step we provide this uh, interactive guide to for volunteers to learn our application. So in this step, you can see all the information we provide and understand the rules and how to use that and how you can get credit from this, store, um, this platform or this storefront. Also, like I mentioned before, we provide a user-friendly labeling tool. This labeling tool allows volunteers to create, resize, and delete bounding balls. And we also provide a select box for volunteers to choose specific door tab or door loop tab. Since I mentioned that in during the interview, we know that knowing the door tab and door loop tab will be helpful for them to recognize them in the event. So we want to collect those data. We provide select box for user easily help us to select the exact tab in our data set. Also, this labeling tool supports image resizing, just like you see on, on the right side, and support the keyboard shortcut. We can use keyboard to delete something, duplicate bounding balls, or even uh, quit the um, labeling mode. And we will do that uh, during the demo time. We will see more and more of that later. And since we mentioned the door tab and door tab, actually we have a five five tabs for door and four tabs for door loop we also collect stairs data tab and ram and each bounding box will look like this on the right side and each color represent one tab for example this is door stairs and the green stand for the the door loop etc etc and to better manage our volunteers we create a credit and ranking system. 
we design series of badges to um, correspond to different ranking levels. Different scores of volunteers will match different ranking levels. We have um, six badges, and of course, we have six ranking levels. And volunteer can get credits by querying images or verifying others' images or labels. Or even if they find something wrong, they can modify it easily. And also, we provide a leaderboard for uh, volunteer to check the real time scores from any other volunteers so they can compete with each other by looking at the leaderboard. And also to make everything funny, we also provide, uh, we also design and implement some gamified functions. We have a um, lot of hidden treasures buried uh, randomly in the New York City. So we hope our volunteers can discover them later. So volunteer can um, continuous in this explore the city and collect storefront image to discover these treasures. And of course, when you find the treasures, you can get the extra point, about 10 credits in, in, in our rules for, for these uh, beta tests. And the last part I think is talking about the volunteer community service letters. So we have worked with the Lighthouse, um, which is a, a organization that helping Black people for many years. And we want to say, we want to attract more and more high school students to help us to collect this accessibility data. And volunteers who has best performance, what that means is that volunteers get with, uh, can request for community service letter by Nighthouse guy to, to add large their service to the research efforts. Of course, if they collect more and more, if they make lots of contribution in, in Dolphins, we will uh, email them, we contact them. And if they request, and, and if they want some uh, community service letter, that's definitely okay. And we will do that. Then we come up to the serious questions. So since we are talking about collecting data, but how to make sure the quality of these kinetic labels or even image or labels. The first thing we do is the labels can be verified by the volunteers. We set up, we decide Google Straight View add-on that allows labels to become three markers embedded in the scene. So in the Google Straight View scene, you can see this um, circle point. And when you click it, you can see the uh, the, uh, the label tab and label by who, and you can see the sub tab, or even you can see the bounding box directly. And in this case, if you find something wrong, you can view it, means you can modify these um, bounding box and labels to correct it, to make sure the image quality and also the label quality. Also, we design a reviewing page that allows volunteers to review or even verify others' volunteer storefront image and labels without exploring the city. So we don't need to get into the exploring page, exploration page. We just get into this uh, reviewing page. We can see all the image at once. So the review page looks just like other labeling page, but it does not allow volunteers to delete the image because this image is created by other people or other volunteers. So on this review page, volunteer only needs to do is to verify the labels um, of in each image and submit their confirmation. When they submit it, that means they review it. This image has been verified and all the label has been verified. So we said the rule is when the image has been verified by three more than three people, that means this all the labels, including the image, will be assumed is correct. So that will be not um, verified or well, will be read more and we will be any more. So in order to study the usability of the user experience of our applications. We conduct an informal beta test and 
desired users experience surveys with 13 volunteers. In this test, um, with the help of 13 participants, we collected 234 images in total, including 676 labels with four uh, predefined categories. Sorry about that. Doors and stairs and ramps and and door loops. During um, this inspection, we found that seven. Oh yeah, we randomly inspect fifteen out of the of these two hundred and thirty three images, around like twenty percent, including one hundred and twelve labels. Three labels were labeled with incorrect category, and four labels have um incorrect bounding box. Based on this data, the accuracy rate is approximately 93, 94%. But this result is not statistically significant since only a limited manual uh, inspection was performed. So in terms of um, the user's experience survey, those questions are listed in a table, in these two tables. The question was decided with three main objectives in mind. Um, the first one is we aim to evaluate the usability of our applications. The second is we int intended to understand the user's experience. The third, we want to know the user engagement. And most questions receive a positive response with more than 15% of votes, as we expected. And this is the question we have. For example, we have like, how do you like the way we collect through the Google Street View? People can rate it from one to five. And we got um, yeah, 54% of five. Finally, we should talk about the conclusion. We have um, designed a crowdsourcing application that collect large scale storefront accessibility data in New York City. And we have conducted a pilot user study to receive and receive uh, positive and encouraging feedbacks. The future work is obvious for the first future work since we are collecting data. So as we collect more and more storefront images and accessibility data, we can leverage them to retrain our deep learning model to improve the performance. So this is will be a, a good triangle there. So model assist users or volunteers to confirm the image and labels. And all the image and labels will be used to retrain the model. So with this recycle, the model will be will be become more and more powerful and more and more accurate. The precision and the recall, all the metrics will be will become very, very good. And it's, other features can be done by other developers. So for example, we can think about accessibility score, um, a map shows like we can create a map, then the map can show accessible areas and in accessible areas, people can tell where they want to live or where they want to go. Also, um, the navigation and trip planning application can also be, be done by using our data since we, uh, since each um, storefront accessibility label uh, is georeferencing, so so the door and loop and ramp and also stairs are available for use. So they, if you have interest about this um, this app and you want to use some useful data, you can use um, our data. So now. Let's look at our app. Okay, so this is the home page for our app. So you can log in, but I'm already logged in. And um, we can look at the leaderboard for checking the other volunteers. So since we already do some beta tests, so we have um, some data in our database, but for the competition, we will recount our order score. So don't worry about that part we can export it. This is the exploration page. For example, if we want to query this storefront, we can just capture current image. When we capture it, the model needs some time to 
to recognize this all the labels and we will go forward for other for other storefront when we capture it and also we can see all the images we query by clicking the draw over label we can see uh, what we have here and also we can see the heading page and zoom level by by this information if we don't like uh, if you don't want to uh, keep go keep exploring this uh, certain location you can click change straight view location to get to another random location also feel free to use this um, regular google map to drop the yellow figure to wherever you want to go and then create them all and you come here so of course you can also use this one to uh, fast pass forward to a certain location and then to query the image. Also, you can check the other image when the modeling is pre-labeling. Then you can edit or confirm the work. For this part, it's always is correct. So you can give the the task for this one, I think, is double door. So you can see double door, submit the labels, the other, and this one is a door. And you can see the door loop has been recognized. And also, you can submit the labels. And for this one, also, you can submit the labels. Then you come back to this scene. You can see the 3D marker is over with this display here. And it will stick over the, the door. So no matter how you rotate it, it doesn't matter. So let's check the validate labels. You can see all others volunteers contribution by looking at this image. You can check it. If you find something wrong, then you can modify it. Other than that, you can just submit that. That's pretty much what you should do. And when you review one image, you can still got one score. So that's the workflow for our door front. Also, like Dr. Hao Tang mentioned that we have a competition activity we call um, Mapathon. It's a virtual scavenger hunt. The rule is this below. The Mapathon starts at today, 3 p.m. on March 12th and ends at um, 3 p.m. on March 19th. Um, the, the first three volunteers who have completed the most work will receive the following awards. Query image and validation receive the same scores. But all these scores are based on the quality and the accuracy. And the result will be announced on the app, rep, the app website. I want to I will allow this through the, the leaderboard. So anybody just look at the leaderboard to see the final result. And also the winner will receive email notification too by uh, March 23rd. Um, oh, I forgot to put this name in the, maybe Dr. Houghton can put this name on, on the chat then. And also make sure you sign up your account with the accurate information because this is the one way that I can contact you if you uh, want to join this competition. And the reward is the first place is we will reward uh, $15 uh, Amazon gift card and 30 Amazon gift card for the second place and the third place we get the 20 Amazon gift card. Yeah, thank you. Okay. And if you have any questions, and you can contact uh, Dr. Tan at this email address and welcome to um, session. I have uh, one of my students. I'm sorry, this is uh, Dr. Melly okay. in uh, room Great. 113 at BMCC. We're having our security class right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we just got over doing some exercises with NMAP scanning the network, and then we've been talking about devices, bring your own devices and things security around those portable devices. Okay. It's somewhat related to what we're discussing indirectly. However, there's a student that has a question for you. you okay. Want to ask a question? 
Please go ahead. What is the question? She says the question is, what sort of information are you looking for? What's the target? Is it only restaurant or you, uh, what's the scope in regards to the, uh, the, the uh, information required for the application? Yeah, I think the first target will be the commercial Zoom. So like you said, maybe the restaurant or other like more, the big more or other supermarket or other thing or other store. So we are not only limit on the restaurant. That's my first target, but maybe we will extend it more. We will look at like other thing like straight with the, the straight or other coursework or other tree or other thing later. So mostly uh, commercial spaces like yes. restaurants and malls and, and maybe trying to catch a bus, things like yeah, that. Yeah, because those places are people want to go. Okay. Right. Does that answer your question? Good. Anybody else? Okay, I think uh, that's good. To my students, uh, that was the main question they had for you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for you guys joining. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Oh, something on the chat, maybe. Do we have to look for what kind of tools? Yeah, we, we do, yeah. We provide the tabs for you to, to select. So when you label the door, you're supposed to also check the, the door tabs. Yeah, go ahead. If you have Okay, As, yeah, uh, qu question please. Uh, what devices can the volunteers use? So beside the computer, can do they use like tablets, phones, or? Uh, unfortunately for this version, we only support like the, computer because in other devices it will looks ugly for all the ui so this is a web application if you have like bigger screen or monitor that will be perfect for this application so we will um develop to extend our like more compatibility to other devices like mobile phone or ipad or other else later in the futures we will see okay see thank you yeah no problem yeah, for now, just use the web browser in your laptop, computer, that's fine. Also, if you, if you, you are using like MacBook, some small screen, and you found something not that decent, you can do something Zoom, because like Chrome, they provide you a, a function called Zoom in, Zoom out. You can just, with a, oh, sorry, different Zoom level, then you can see a better, view or better user interface. So that's not a problem. Any other question? Hi, I'm uh, Jawei. I actually have something to call out because I signed up already and I was yeah. going through the tutorial. And so after I get to the labels, there's no button that says, okay, it just gives me the information. And so I just had to like refresh the page and um, oh, skip you, the tutorial. Do you click the button? So uh, the, the tutorial is something like that. When you click less, yeah. less, because I want you to know this thing. So you have to click this to continue the, the rest of the steps. Oh, no, I'm only doing validate labels right now. So in the validate oh. labels um, okay. tutorial, there's a so also one of the red to, buttons. Is yeah, missing. You, have, you have to also click this one. Yeah, yeah, so, so click, I did that. Oh, you yeah, you right there. Oh, okay. Because this is the tab buttons. I, I want to show you guys how to use these tab buttons. Because, okay. Yeah, see, when you yeah. see here, when you nothing show the last, that means you have to click this one. Okay, that makes sense now. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So when you finish, then you can start. So yeah, maybe I want to add a one thing. Uh, yeah. Um, so uh, Java in the presentation also mentioned uh, uh, available available like community service uh, letter. Uh, we can provide um, uh, from the Lighthouse Guild, who is the 
A uh, non-profit organization provides service for the blind or visually impaired. Um, so for any like a school, high school students, and if they are required or they are willing to contribute their local community, or they are required to have uh, like a finish like certain number of hours uh, uh, community service every year. I think this is a great opportunity because particularly during pandemic, there are a lot of uh, library or nonprofit organization, they don't provide in-person service or they don't provide the opportunity for like as a regular base. So uh, with that, our platform allows uh, students can uh, volunteer their time and uh, uh, online right? it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty convenient and safe and and when they finish and they can always look into the uh, leaderboard to see their um, their like statistics and and if they are ready or they are willing to uh, get the letter and um, please contact us and and we can provide definitely from the Lighthouse Guild. We can acknowledge your service and to this research effort. I think this is a great opportunity. Yeah, if you have a, like a friend, family friends, and um, who are like a, have a kids and in high school or, or middle school, they are willing to contribute their local community. I think this is a, yeah a great opportunity. Yeah, later on, uh, next step we want to add. Uh, a more feature into this platform. And I think a lot of people know Pokemon and play the Pokemon Go, right? So uh, we want to add a more like a, a interactive uh, feature into this platform. So when the when the students, particular student they, and uh, using this uh, survey, this uh, app, when they explore the local community, uh, we want to add a more information about the building, the business, uh, maybe some interesting ge uh, geography information or history uh, information of that uh, maybe restaurant or building and who, who like when the the building was uh, built and uh, who were the owner if there's a famous or some uh, history right remark and we we want to add it and so yeah that's another uh, feature we are looking for to uh make this app or more engaged all right so i think we're done right um if we no more question shows up yeah i guess so uh